Here he is, Mr. Lindell Wigington in the flesh. Thank you very much uh, for joining the podcast. No problem. Thanks for having me. I've been a fan of you ever since. It looked like you were floating in the air for 10 minutes when you were with <laughs> Iowa and you dunked on number number three for yeah. Oklahoma. I've been a fan ever since. So uh, appreciate that. to have you here, man. Thank you once again. No problem. How's, uh, how is the summer of Lindell Wigington going? How are you? It's going good. Um, a little bit closer to the mic there. There yeah, you go. Yeah. It's going good. Uh, I just got back. Um, I just went back and forth from Milwaukee. Um, I played in in Vegas for for the summer league. Um, but you know, spending a lot of my time in Milwaukee, just staying in the gym. You know, I'm trying to stay in the gym, get better each and every day. Um, and I come come here to, you know, have fun and see my family sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's been good. When whenever people like go for a goal and then they achieve the goal, I've heard that there's a a point of you can believe it. They go, oh my God, can you believe it? You're in the NBA. Holy smokes. But there's a point. You work so hard. It, 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 were you surprised or are you pinching yourself a bit? No, nah, I, I wasn't surprised because like like you said, like I worked my whole life for it. So when when the opportunity came and you know, I just try to, you know, make the best of it. Um I worked my whole life for it and that's literally what I wanted. And that's that's what I that's what was that's what was my end goal to get get to the NBA and, you know, I got there so um yeah, it wasn't like a shock to me. Um, it was like just finally. It was just like yeah, finally. Yeah. It was like finally, I, everything I work for um, is happening now. So, so you had a deep belief this whole time. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Who introduced the game of basketball to you? Um, you know, my 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 dad, my, dad, my brothers. Um, they all played. Um, one of my brothers played the University of Buffalo. Um, my dad, he didn't really play like in college or anything. He just played high school. But he was a, he was a legend growing up here. Uh, playing in the black tournament and everything. What's his name? Uh, Biffy Downey. Biffy? His name's Biffy? Yeah, That's a sick name. Biffy Downey, yeah. <laughs> and then um, when they had the Raymond, you know, the Raymond, yeah. My, my oldest brother, he played He played for the Raymond when he was when he was young, so. I think your brothers uh, work out at the same gym I work out at. Oh, for real? Because it's a, the gym is like a networking opportunity. Then you go, hey, that's Lindell's. Someone told me that's Lindell's brother over there. You should yeah. go talk to him. I was like, I'll leave him alone. But yeah. <laughs> I, I think he works out there, but that's cool. Uh-huh. So you're the youngest? I'm the youngest, yeah. So you have to fight for the respect on the court? Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's awesome. That's been crazy. There's been really good commentary when you were playing uh, you know, on ESPN. And even when you were, I think, first couple of games with Milwaukee, the commentators called you tough. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you take that with pride that you you come as a tough basketball player? Yeah, definitely. Um, growing up in... Growing up in you know, Halifax, you know, Nova Scotia, like where I'm from is you got to be tough. So like I take that, you know, I take great pride in that. Um, you know, my dad taught me how to be tough. My brothers taught me how to be tough. And yeah, that's just, that's just what comes with it with me. When I play, I grew up playing hockey. And when I thought of basketball, I didn't automatically think tough. I'm like, these guys don't even wear gear. What's going on? And yeah. then YouTube started generating videos over time of uh, like up close personal uh, videos of like defense and elbows and i saw some of the pads that you guys wear on your um, legs underneath your shorts and there's some like bruises that you can see it's crazy yeah. the amount of beatings that you guys take when especially the big guys down low it's it's incredible because you guys aren't really wearing any gear yeah not not really no gear and i don't even wear the pads like you don't I, don't, wear the pad? I don't wear i don't wear none of the padded stuff i just wear I, I wear the compressions but i don't i don't wear the ones with the pad the pads in them Why? but a lot of people do wear the ones with the pads in them have you tried the pads i tried them yeah i don't i don't really like how they they fit. I don't like how I move with them on. So, oh yeah, I, I don't. I don't use them. But you have the option to wear but the pads. I have, yeah, I have the option to wear the pads. Like, a lot of people do wear the pads, though. Huh. I'm good, though. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Keeps you light on your feet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> how old were you when you figured out? Whoa, wait a second, Lindell. I have a little bit of a. I don't want to say advantage, but I'm pretty good at this game of basketball. How old were you when you figured that out? Um, I would say junior high. When I when I went into junior high, um, that's when I, I kind like I knew I was good at basketball. Uh, I didn't really think about like the NBA or anything because it's like you know we come from a small town like it's it's not really a, like an option. But my my brother kind of paved the way for me. He because like I said he went to he went to University of Buffalo and uh, he went to prep school in, in in Maine. So he he kind of paved the way for me. Um, and ever since that, like I just you know followed the path and you know wherever my talents took me, it, it took me. Yeah, because it's it's you know when you play hockey, there's so many role models. But basketball, yeah, you don't got no role models. I, so you, it was just no, your brother. Yeah, I had no role models. That's it was just him. Really? I was. Yeah. That's an interesting perspective because now you can call your role model. I couldn't call Crosby growing up. Yeah. 
you know, you can ask what's going on. How do you do this? What, yeah. what happens when you have a little bit of ad- uh, adversity? What do I do now? That must've exactly. been nice. Yeah, no, it was good. Like it was my brother. So you know, I, I, I was going to look up to him regardless. Yeah. So, I mean, he just made it easier because the stuff he went through, um, you know, playing and, and prep and going to college and having to go to Juco, you know, route to get, get to where he was in, in division one. I, I just, I just seen all the, all the, all the failures that he went through that I didn't have to go through because I seen it growing up. Paved a highway. Yeah. That's a luxury. That's awesome. For sure. Um, going to Prince Andrew, I saw you played one year there. I think that's great. You know, yeah. I, I played one year of high school hockey. It was great. You're playing in front of your friends, you know, you get the girls there, you know, it's just a great time. Yeah. What, what was that one year like playing at Prince Andrew before you left to, to go see the rest of the world? It was, it was amazing because the whole city come to see me. Yeah. Oh, did they? The whole city, everybody come to see me play. So it was, it was good. <laughs> like it was, it was fun. It was fun. I could have, I could have left and and not went to Prince Andrew. I could have left like my first year of high school. I didn't, I didn't have to stay here, but I wanted to stay here because I wanted to, I wanted the atmosphere. I wanted to see see what it was like playing. And my brother played one year uh, at Prince Andrew too. So, dude, that says a lot about your saying. character. You just, you could have left and you stayed. Yeah, I wanted to see what it was like. How big is the Prince Andrew and gym? Lit. Like, how many um, people can fit in there? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Not it's not a lot of people, but. It was packed every game. It was packed. It was packed. The, the sidelines was packed everywhere. Under the basket, no sit, no sitting room. Dude, how, dude. no sitting room. How, how do you keep every your, gym I went to? It was, it was, it was fun. How do you keep your ego in check there? How do you do that? How do you just focus on a goal of having the whole city coming to you, but you have to stay level headed to to try to make it to the NBA? Um, I just, I just play basketball. It's just you don't like, worry I, about I don't anything think, else. Yeah, I don't, I don't think about nothing else. Like I just play basketball. It's a sport. Just, it's what I love to do. It's just like breathing to you. It's, it's in like, your. It's just not even. It's just in me. Like I, I don't like have no pressure on me or nothing. Like I just. Wow. I'm built for it. That's crazy. I, I love that you did that and played one year here, yeah. and you could have left. That you had yeah, the option. Cool. It was cool. It was definitely cool. Was it tough leaving home? How old would you have been when you left? Fifteen. Yeah, I was fifteen when I left. How was that difficult? Um, at first it was. At first it was because you know I was going to. Oak Hill Academy, the number one basketball school in the world. Carmelo played there, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it was like I wasn't used to. I wasn't used to. I wasn't used to. I was used to working hard, but I wasn't used to working consistent every day. So I, so you know how it is. With, basketball wasn't that big down here at the time. So <clears throat> when I was down here, we was probably practicing like two or three times a week as opposed to me going there and I'm practicing every single day. I'm 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 training two times a day, so it it was a different it was a different work ethic, I I had to get adjusted to, but you know like I said I'm built for it. My 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 dad made me tough and my brothers made me tough, so yeah. Um, I kind of got you know adjusted to it. I wouldn't say fairly quick, but it but it was kind of quick. Right. At first I wanted to leave though. Really? Yeah, I wanted to leave. I've sure. heard of this. I leave. I've had a couple other friends that have left, and when they got there and like it's a reality once their parents leave in yeah. the car and like. Did that reality set in quick? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, especially because you the first when you get there, the first two months you're not playing. Like, it's just it's really just school and school and like practice. You're not like playing games. So, like being there and having to get adjusted to like um, the work ethic that that guys are putting in, and and then also everybody on my team is ranked. I'm just a I'm just a scrawny kid from Nova Scotia coming in. I'm I'm the I'm the youngest, I'm the smallest. It's like you got to get adjusted to everything. So um, me going there, it was I mean it was a blessing, um, but I definitely like the first two months I was feeling it. I'm like yeah I'm trying to go home. I, I was calling my I was calling my parents like yeah I'm trying to go home. Yeah. Wow. Well, what's that recruiting process like of going there? Like who sees you from here? Or was you was a YouTube video? Like how do how do you get recruited to go to where is Oak Hill? I, uh Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. Virginia. So yeah. who who's coming from Virginia to here to see this guy named Lindell? So um it was a it was a um like a tournament called the Global Challenge and they have like Team USA, Team Canada, um, like Team China. And uh, it was in Chicago at the time, and I was playing on Team Canada. I was the youngest on Team Canada. I was like two years younger than everybody, but I was playing with the with the older guys, the big boys. Yeah, and my um my coach from Oak Hill, the head coach, he was coaching one of the USA teams, and we played we played um one of the USA teams, and I had a a good game for a young guy, and um 
yeah, it just it just happened like that. And I, I was playing AAU with uh, Grassroots Elite in um in Toronto and my my AAU coach was pretty cool with uh, Coach Smith. So um that's kinda how the how the link up happened. That's great. That's that's kinda how it went. Well moving to we didn't even talk about moving to America. Was moving to America a little bit you know, it's America. Was that tough at first? Um I would say just living on my own was tough, like fifteen living on your like own. Like having to like do my own laundry, like watch this, like all, all all the stuff that you don't do as a as a young kid, your your parents kind of do for you. You kind of matures you as a it kind of matured me quick mm. when I got there. Um but yeah. All this knowledge that you've gained over the past how old are you right now? 24. So 24 years on planet Earth as we like to call it, you must have gained a lot of knowledge. And coming back here, you know, you're you're where you're you're here in Halifax, you where you're from and or sorry, from the other side of the bridge, but you have so much knowledge. Yeah. Is there a part of you that wants to hand this knowledge down? Yeah, for sure. Like I um I want to show the kids that like they could do it if if they put their mind to it, they can do it cuz I did it. I was in the same position as them, you know, growing up. So I want to show them that they can do it too. Well, when you say you have to practice four or five times a week when you're in Oak Hill, that's that's a lot. Yeah, and a, you're saying it's, it's here you're like, doing it twice here, a week. He was only doing it like twice a week. That's yeah. a whole other level. It wasn't like it wasn't. I, I I say it wasn't as serious here. It wasn't as serious like hockey. Like hockey. Yeah, it's, it's it wasn't like hockey. Like here, two times a week is is nothing. You you do two times a week in the, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. It's, you're not gonna get nowhere doing that. Mm-hmm. You not. It's not the right the right work ethic so what, what were some of the things that you had to work on that i guess people told you in order to make it to ncaa tier one basketball when you're at oak hill and you want to make that next jump what are some things that people were telling you um like i was kind of like i was already good like my skill was there i just had to get bigger like i had now, to get bigger six one? uh yeah like six one six two yeah i had to just get gain more weight like i was small i was skinny going there like i was i was real skinny and like I had to get like gain weight, but my skill my skill was always there. Like um, it was just me like getting the opportunity to be seen and, and be noticed from like college coaches. And Oak Hill, like we got college coaches there every day, like Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, and, like everybody was there in the gym every day watching us practice. So they just see me grow as a player. Like my first year, I didn't play a lot. Um, like at the beginning of the year, but you know, as I started working on my game and my work ethic started to get there. Like it was like, I felt myself getting better and and the coaches and stuff seen me getting better too. So that next year, like I took off, I took off like going into like summer workouts. Like I was like the best in the gym. Like I, I took off. So, yeah, I got, we, I had this conversation with Darling about the work ethic that you have to put in to become a better basketball player, and we we agreed upon a term called spiritual. It's almost spiritual the amount of work that you have to put in to become point A to point B type basketball player. Even if you want to be better by an inch, you have to be obsessed with it. Yeah. Could you talk about some of those obsession obsession moments that you've gone through? Maybe at a gym at two in the morning. Maybe you put up a thousand shots a day. Could you talk about maybe one story that you had that you just kind of went out of your mind and stayed in the gym for a long period of time? Um, it's not really like, it's not really no set, like, it's not really no set like events that, like I do that, that, I don't know, like my girl, like when I, when I leave from the, when I leave from the gym, like if I'm at practice and then I go back home and then like, I'm just bored, I'm chilling. Like I, I like want to get back in the gym. Like I, I, like I feel to get back in the gym. Like my girl can tell you that. Like, so, I mean, that's really it. Like, it's just. You touch a basketball wanna, every day. Yeah, I want to be in a gym. Yeah, that's just that's just what it is. Like, right now, you want to be in a gym. You got a. It yeah, looks like I a court behind this kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I wasn't here, yeah, I'd be in a gym. That's uh, th- that's great to hear. I love the. Uh, you, you say you have you've had the talent since day one, but to add talent with work ethic, I think that's kind of a rare thing in today's society. So to see both yeah. of the things come together, and especially a guy from Nova Scotia to have the two come together and go where you've gone, that's yeah. You know, just makes me more proud to be a Nova Scotian. It's 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 awesome, man. Definitely gotta be confident with too with it too. Like a, it's a mind thing that comes with it. Explain that a little bit more. Like like you gotta you gotta have the mindset. You gotta like want to do it. You gotta want to be the best. Like I feel like um, a lot of kids don't have the, the confidence in themselves. So, like I feel like when they have, when they have, when you have the most confidence in yourself, confidence in yourself, and like nobody else has that confidence in you, like you gotta, you gotta be the most, 
the most like strategical on on yourself. Like you got to be the most confident in yourself because nobody else can be more more confident than you mm. in yourself. So when you're walking around the gym in Oak Hill and you see these scouts from college, do you have to show that confidence and network with these college scouts, or is that illegal? You can't. Uh, do yeah, that. you cu- you couldn't like you couldn't like really speak to them until your senior year. I think it, maybe junior year. You that junior, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I don't like, know. Second uh, year, uh, yeah, you could, like eleventh, eleventh grade. You couldn't. The end of the eleventh grade, you couldn't. You couldn't. So you couldn't. Like if I, when I was in tenth grade, I couldn't speak to them. Okay, I got you. Um, but eleventh grade, I could speak to them. But that must be um, part of it. Going up to a grown man, shaking his hand, yeah, saying yeah, hello, yeah. sir. Nice to meet like, you. Imagine, I, imagine, imagine a young kid just going in there. You know, Coach K is in the gym. I couldn't going to shake Coach K's hand. Did you like, do that? Bill Self, yeah, like Bill Self in the gym. Like all those, all those big time coaches, coach, coach Calipari in the gym. So it's, it was what do you think? What's going through your head before you, you know, you introduce yourself? Like you have to, you talk about like, confidence. Like I, like I always had confidence in myself. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to shake their hand and introduce myself. But yeah, I want you to see me too on the court. Like I want to, I want, I want to show you like that. I'm one of the best. So I love this guy. This guy, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Um, so how did, uh, how, how did you land on, uh, Iowa? Um, they was kind of, they was kind of one of the first to start recruiting me. So like, I'm like big on loyalty. So, um, I want to, like, I had, I had a lot, I had every school, basically. I had every school recruiting me. Stay humble. And I just wanted to like, yeah, I wanted to go somewhere where I, I know they really, they really liked me, and I, I know I was really going to go there and play. Um, so Monte Morris was at Iowa State. Um, he was in his senior year, and we we all knew he was going to go to the NBA. So um, I just kind of made my move like, yeah, this is probably the best fit for me because I'm going to go play right away. I don't want to go to a school and, and sit the first year or two and have to stay like a, a, a four – do like a four-year um, you know, term there. So – I just wanted to go somewhere I was going to play right away and get to show the world that I'm the real deal. I'm the real deal. Yeah. How was that experience going in for the first time? You know, you got the, the dorm rooms, you have uh, the cafeteria. The, what's it called? Freshman 15? Did you put on freshman 15? Um, or you stayed lean? I kind of stayed, like, lean. I didn't, get, I didn't get bigger until, like, my second year. Okay. Um. Yeah, so. But I guess you were already compared. You already knew what the work ethic was going to be like coming from Oak Hill. Yeah, I already knew. I already knew what the work ethic, like, Oak Hill is like college. It was like college. Like, you, you was in the weight room at high school. You already went through the conditioning stuff. We were running miles, like, up, like on the hills. So, it was, it was, it was cool. Like, I already, knew, I already knew what it was coming into it. What was it like living in Iowa? I don't know if I'll ever be there. Like maybe one day. But what's Iowa like? Oh, that's real chill. Um, we was in, like, a college, a college town. So, um, it was literally just all basketball, and that's what I wanted. That's why. That's kind of why I chose to go there. Yeah, I want to just get better. Like we talked about, like having a habit for being in the gym and want to be in the gym. Like that's all I wanted to do. I just want to get better. I want to try to make it to the NBA. So, were you allowed access to the gym at all times? Yeah, at all times, whenever I wanted to. It's a perk. Yeah, <laughs> must be nice. Yeah, no, so, no, it was it was it was good. It was a big time. How many years were you there for? Uh, I, I went there for two years. Okay, nice. Yeah. When you're there and you start to see, you know, NBA rumblings, things yeah. happening, what does that do to a guy's mindset of, whoa, wait a second here, pro basketball could be in my future? What 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 goes through your head then? Um, so going there, I never thought like I never thought I would I knew I could make it to the NBA, but I never thought like of being one and done. Like I never thought like I was just going to go be one and done. Like, I always had the confidence, like, I'm going to get to the NBA, like, however way is possible. But I never, like, thought being one and done. So after I had a good freshman season, like, I tested the NBA waters, like, in the buzz. was like, I could. I could be one and done. But. So I, 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 what is one and done again, sorry? Like, you just play it, one year. And yeah, one and done. Go, sorry. Go okay, my mistake. Yeah. Go straight to the NBA. I got gotcha. you. And, um, yeah, so I kind of had the buzz, like, I could be one and done. Um, but I want to. It was more like second round, second round type, and I wanted to be a first round. And so I came back from my my second year, and the first game I got hurt. And, like, I was already projected to be, like, top 20 pick. 
in the draft. I was projected to be top 20 pick, and then I got hurt, and I was out for the um the whole regular season, like not going into Big 12, not going into Big 12 play, like conference play. So I was out for like 12 games, and that kind of like that kind of hurt me, like hurt my stock. And like when I got back on the court, I wasn't fully, I wasn't fully healthy. Like I wasn't, I was I was healthy, but I was I was still playing with. What like, was the injury? Uh, like I um partially tore my my plantar fasciitis. Yeah, I don't know what is it. What's that? Yeah, it's like it's like it's like the muscle in the bottom of your foot. Okay. Yeah. So Mark shaking his head. Look, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> I partially tore that. So. How do you tear that? Jump coming yeah, down? I, yeah, I came down. I, I I don't know. It was just it just popped. Yeah. It was it was it was weird. When you dunked on that guy from Oklahoma, number three. Did you hurt your hip at all coming down? That was I didn't. I, I just I just got the wind knocked out of me. Did you? Yeah. I didn't. I wouldn't have guessed that. Nobody nobody knew because the the cameras. Once the cameras got off me, then that's when I oh I, I kind of fell to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to shot. It was tough. <laughs> oh man, he, well, the way you look because the, the commentary is like, oh, he fell hard on his hip, but you got up and sprinted back. I was like, no one knew what happened. He's like, nobody. It knew. looked like you were and good. Then we, and then uh, my coach called a timeout after that. So. Oh, so you're good. So yeah, just give me the I towel just, over. I just wanted, yeah, <laughs> put, my, put a towel on my head. Went and sat down. But the, but the wind was definitely knocked into me, though. That must, man, how happy were you when? I that, was that's, happy. I was happy because I, I, I wouldn't have been able to play defense. I wouldn't have been able to play defense. <laughs> no, I mean, after the dunk. Like, how happy were you that, like, that was, oh, the, man, was to this day, that's one of the best dunks I think ever. Oh, yeah, it was cool. Like, it got a lot of buzz. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was number two, number one on Sports Center. It was cool. You have it framed somewhere, a photo of it at your house? Nah. Oh, you got to get that. I have one. Nothing? My cousin got a tattoo on his leg. Of Love the it. dunk? Yeah. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Did you have a picture of it? No. Uh, I gotta see. Not now, you, but I got to see yeah, that. I'll show you That's nuts. At, so at this point, when you're going, like, I've, I've always wondered about this. I don't have an agent, but when agents approach you and they go, Lindell, my name's yada yada, I'd love to represent you. How do you go about choosing an agent? Uh... You have a lot of meetings. How many meetings you have did you have? A lot of meetings with like, um, I don't know. I had a lot. Like some sit down meetings, some meetings like literally just after the game, they'll come watch you and they'll meet you after the game. And it's like, yeah, that's just what it is. I had I had a lot of meetings, but um, do you get your family know, you involved? Gotta, yeah, um, you definitely get your family involved at a point. Um, I think I try to get I try to get a feel for the agent myself at first, and then I let them talk to my 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 family and like my parents, my mom, and dad. So okay, cool. Yeah. So then going into that, you went into the NBA undrafted. Was there yeah. a chip on your shoulder? I've heard those benefits of not getting drafted because then you get to yeah. pick and choose. Well, how do you feel about all that? Um, I mean, obviously I would like to be drafted, but yeah, but I I had a chip on my shoulder, but I I always had a chip on my shoulder. It wasn't like Oh, just because I was undrafted, I got a chip on my shoulder. Like, even if I was drafted number one, I would have still had a chip on my shoulder. Like, that's just me. Yeah. Like, I, I want to be the best. Like, yeah. I, I still would have had a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Even if I would have got drafted first pick, first round, whatever. Yeah. That's just me. I saw your first ever NBA experience was with the Lakers, correct, at their camp? At their, yeah. It was Practic- like, it was like, a, um, like a pre, like a pre-draft workout. What was that like? It was cool. I got to meet Magic Johnson, um, work on the front of him. So um, it was definitely cool. It's a I, different experience. I remember seeing cool. photos of it. It looked unbelievable. Just yeah. the, it just that it's late. The Lakers, you know. It's, yeah. No, it, it was cool. It was definitely cool. How do you maneuver that side of free agency of of, of finding a team that, uh, that to go with? I guess. So like like you said, like going on, it's it kind of is some like perks to going undrafted because you can kind of pick where you want to be and like I wouldn't say pick where you want to be because the team has to want you regardless um but like if a team likes you like you can kind of pick where you want to start your pro career yeah like and um I mean you just got to do research on it like you yourself not 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 yourself like your agent but me myself I want to do research too because I want to see who's in front of me I want to see the player that's in front of me and I want to Go up against them and show that I, I can be that. Wow! So, so the Milwaukee the, the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm-hmm. 
Well, well first of all, congratulations on your new contract. Appreciate like, that. Like congratulations. That's 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 awesome. Appreciate that. How uh, how was the first, you know, couple of years in, in, in Milwaukee in that experience? Uh it's been great. Um no, I love Milwaukee because it they're the they're the team that gave me a real opportunity in the NBA. So um I'll forever love them for that. Um but yeah, it's it's been great. We got a we got a great group of guys, great vets. We just got a good team overall. Like the the front office is great and the coaching staff is great. So yeah, um, you know, just being around a great group of guys that have a great work ethic. Like these guys work hard. Like like Giannis, superstar, probably the hardest worker. Ever. Really? Yeah. Like Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, they, those guys work work hard. So it's like just being able to see see them like firsthand and see how hard they work to to become the great players they are. It just makes me want to work just like that. Do you feel like a sponge right now? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just learning from them every day. Like I was I was in the gym with Drew Holiday this week. So it was like I'm just learning from him. What's a conversation like with him right now? Um right now? Um really just pick just picking his brain on like what he sees on the court like against defensive coverages. Like even in any even when we're playing like against each other or on the same team, just like picking his brain on what what to do in a certain situation or a certain spot on the floor. So okay, yeah. So it's it's been good. I I think the NBA is the coolest league in the world. I think it is. I, I think they market it the best. Yeah. There's something about a guy going up and dunking a ball slow motion with some rap music behind yeah, it yeah, yeah. that looks incredible <laughs> yeah. on a commercial. And whoever runs your guys is um. Twitter account does a fantastic job. Milwaukee Bucks, like mm-hmm. they'll they'll have photos of you guys walking in, warming up on the game because it's great for us here because when we we take them and then we can use them for ourselves. Like it's yeah. just you guys are great with that stuff. The 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 NBA lifestyle was that. I just feel like there's so many perks. There's so many you know road trips, so many cities, so many restaurants, so, so much to do. Do do you find that aspect of it a lot for you to maybe difficult to focus on basketball or do you thought you you've handled it well so far in these first few years? Uh, no, I thought I handled it well. Like, that's what I want to do. I just want to play basketball. Like, it's not like obviously it's it's great to have like the perks with it, like the the big fancy restaurants, like plane, p- like plane, private jets, like all that stuff. Like, but my my main goal is to play basketball. That's what that's what I get paid to do. Mm. That's what I want to do. Like, that's what that's what I love to do. Mm. So, um, I, I don't I don't feel like it's hard to focus on just playing basketball. That's great. Like for me, because that's what I want to do. I th- I think it's great Milwaukee too. Yeah. Like if, I don't know Miami might be different if you're a young yeah, guy exactly. in Miami. I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know because I haven't experienced it. But yeah, like you said, it could it could be different if I was in Miami. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. But I want to. I, I just want to play basketball. That's what I want to do. What's Giannis like in the dressing room welcoming new guys? <laughs> Seems he's like cool. a big goofball. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's funny. He's funny. He's, he's a cool guy though. Like the most humble superstar probably in the, in the NBA. Like he's a great guy. He's he, he treats everybody the same. NBA champion as well. Yeah. Wow. Great. It's great to hear that. He, he's a great guy. He's sure. you can kind of very kind of similar story to you a little coming yeah. from you yeah. know Greece. Yeah, kind of for sure. You know that's a that's a great uh, role model to have in a locker room to be able to look up to and go oh, okay this guy kind of went through it. Yeah, for sure, and he has like no ego at all. So it's like that's great. you can talk to him when you want to. Like yeah. he's he's a source always. He's always gonna be there. That's awesome. As of all the all the all the guys on our team, like we got we got good, we got good vets. That's a good situation to be in. Oh, I bet. My position. Oh, I bet. Yeah, having people to look up to when you're yeah. in a sponge scenario and you have to. I yeah. bet that's great. For sure. Um, when does the season start? Like when do you start to go to training camp? Uh, training camp starts September 26th. What is it now? 28th. Oh, you got some yeah, time. Yeah, I got some time. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm going back on the sixth though. So the sixth. Mm-hmm. Man, you travel a lot. You're going back and forth. Yeah. Well, why do you like what? What is it you like about training just over there? Just uh, the pro like setting. Just the, yeah, like just just the atmosphere. Like it's a lot of guys and that's are still in, like getting the gym over there. Like it's like I said, Drew Holiday. I was just in the gym back yeah. there with him. Like he don't have to come in this early, but he's there. He's there working. If if Giannis wasn't playing for his national team, he'll he'll be there too. Oh yeah. So it's like like Chris Middleton's there every day, like Grayson Allen, like all those guys are there every day. So I just want, I just like going back and, and working with them. 
Mm-hmm. Like as opposed to just you know staying home and working by myself. Fair enough. So it's yeah. I feel like it makes me better. So Milwaukee has like staff members there right now in yeah. the gym. Just like if if guys want to come and yeah, hoop, whenever, they come hoop. Whenever you want to go back, yeah, you can go back and hoop. Craziest, most fun NBA gym arena to play in, other than Milwaukee. You can't say home. Um, craziest. Um, it's the atmosphere. I would say like L.A. Like L.A. atmosphere is. It's just L.A. Like it's it's full of stars. It's L.A. Like they, I don't know. It's L.A. It's a different feel. It's a different feel in there. So I mean, L.A. I like Chicago a lot. I like Chicago a lot, especially we played them in playoffs too. But but the craziest atmosphere is Boston for sure. The craziest Boston. Did you watch the Lakers Boston? about magic johnson the i think hbo did it the what about magic johnson what's it called the magic time is that what you're talking about the magic time the dog the show it wasn't a documentary the show uh-uh you didn't, didn't watch, watch that no nah. oh man you gotta watch <laughs> that i guess you're just you're in the gym all the time you can't watch it mm-hmm. but uh there's a episode where magic johnson's team back and when did magic johnson play for the lakers 80s, 80s. yeah so they go to boston and they play in the garden and they have a great episode of describing the boston garden and like there's water dripping from the ceiling this is the old boston garden not tv yeah, back yeah. now but what what what's it like just playing in boston and the, i put they just say it's very hostile man it's hostile and, it's loud okay you can't hear your like it's loud lebron like it's, lebron said it's it's crazy lebron said it's racist that's what lebron said yeah, he not said it get into that, <laughs> okay it's, he said it like they'll heckle you and they'll say anything for sure yeah they'll say anything yeah for sure Wow, it's crazy. The do the the fans like courtside. Yeah, courtside in the stands, like whatever. Oh yeah, wherever. That's nuts. So what's it like playing in L.A.? Just the stars on the uh, courtside. Yeah, it's like it's cool. You see every like all the people you see on TV is literally their courtside. Like it's it's cool. It's cool. It's just cool to, for them to come watch like watch you play. Yeah. So it's like. Dang, I'm in the same you know, gym as, as these guys. As but I'm they, sitting, but they coming to watch us. Like they're like fascinated with us too. It's not like we just, you know, fascinated the by. Mic, yeah. It's not like we just fascinated by them, but they fascinated by us too. They come to watch us play. That's a complimenting feeling. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool for sure. It, as as I'm sitting here, and we're having this conversation. Like it doesn't seem like you're just the phased about anything like you just seem so focused on the game of basketball and as i bring up these perks of the nba you're just like yeah i just like playing the game yeah do you notice that in yourself or you've just known this forever it's it's it doesn't really bother you the outside noise yeah no i, I mean i've been the same like it's it's a lot of like pros and cons that come with it but you gotta like it's beauty in both like the you gotta go through the the, the good times and the bad times like you gotta embrace them both so, Fair enough. I mean, that's just what I that's that's what I, what I try to do. What's the living situation like right now in in Milwaukee? Uh, I mean, I got a spot in Milwaukee. Okay, uh, and I stay. I got a I got a condo there. So okay, nice. That's what I say. It must be able to from the pro side just to be able to have your own spot and like focus, not be in the hotel anymore. Like you got a spot, yeah, you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 cool. Like I didn't I didn't have a hotel last year. Like I only had it for like the first couple of weeks I got there. And then um, I had a spot, so yeah, it was it was cool. That was that's the I heard it's a great thing about pro teams is they have people that help you organize your life outside of yeah, basketball. Yeah. They have someone that can find your house. They have like they'll, yeah. they'll tell you where the closest restaurant is. They'll mm-hmm. tell you where the groceries. They, they they apparently it's great for that aspect. Yeah, like that's that's what that's the perks of the NBA. Like you you got people you got resources. Like you have a lot of resources. You don't really have to. If you're a person that you don't want to do nothing on your own, you can like literally call somebody and like they'll do it for you like but i mean i i I do everything on my own but you can call them and like you got resources for everything everything you everything you want give me an example anything in this world like if you um if you want to start a podcast if you want to start a podcast they they have people to help you start a podcast what you can yeah like you can like it's crazy. So if you have a shirt and you buy it, it's too long and you need it like altered. I can go get it. You just take it to the Milwaukee Bucks and they'll alter it for yeah, you. I can get them to like. Yeah. Stop on the mic. Yeah. yeah, and I can get them to 
yeah, if I want to get it altered and all that stuff. That's like, crazy. It's a lot of resources. It's cool. You must be, I feel like a guy in your position, you don't want to use those resources. You just want to yeah, be like, no. I'm good, I'm good on basketball, I'm good. Yeah, no, that's, like me, I just want to, like I said, I just want to play basketball. I'm not, I don't really, I mean, obviously it's good to have it, but I don't really care for, like, you not know, having all those. It's it's good, it's good when, when you do need that at a, at a point. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah. Cool. Are you at the point right now where you just want the season to start? Like you're at an itchy phase. You're like, oh, I don't want to wait anymore. Let's just go. You, you put all this work and you just want to start playing. Um, or do you enjoy this time off? I enjoy. Peace? Yeah, I enjoy the time off because when season hits, like it's on and running. Like it's not. It's no like breaks. So, um, you gotta enjoy it. You gotta enjoy it while you can. Fair enough. But also like stay in the gym and be ready at all times. So yeah. It's great that you come home too. Like, yeah. You know, a guy in your position, you could be anywhere in the world right now, and you're here. Yeah. Well, why is that? I like to be here, and um, I like to show the kids that like I came from where they come from. Like I, I'm in the city. Like I'm, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not, I'm not forgetting where I came from. So, um, yeah, I just want to show them that I'm normal. I'm human, like them. <laughs> That's great. You know what you should do? You should just pull up on like an outdoor court, like a like a, a pickup game, and just surprise some people. You yeah, should nah, do that. No, nah, I definitely like when when the kids play on the courts, um, in like my my hometown and stuff. Like I I definitely like pull up to them and like play with them and stuff. So it's cool. It's cool. Like play just play basketball with them and yeah, like get let them talk to me and all that. Just is what it is. Yeah. Awesome. What's on the agenda from now until you said you're going back on the sixth? Yeah. What's on the on the agenda from now till the sixth? Um, just enjoy some off time with my family. Um, obviously stay in the gym every day. Um, it's like lifting weights, or you mean like the gym? Like uh, both, both. Both. Yeah, lift weights, um, on court workout. Um, but mainly just spending time with my family for this. That's nice. This uh, last week. Have you picked up golf by any chance? No, I haven't. I haven't. But I heard. I heard. I mean, I heard it was good. It was. It was fun. But I haven't really like got into it. Like a lot of my teammates, they do. They do play golf. Do they? Yeah, but I haven't really got the chance to, um, go play with them or anything. Like, I'm not. I'm not. They're. They're like. They're like into it. I'm not really like. Do you ever see a day in your life where you might? Maybe yeah. Like a lot. A lot of. A lot of basketball players get into. It. Like a lot of athletes in general get into. Yeah. Um, golf after you know they're done playing or when even when they're when they're playing like in their off time like off season things like that so yeah it's fun i think i might get into that at some point oh boy there he is yeah <laughs> oh yeah have you ever had a pair of skates on have you ever skated yeah i had a pair of skates on before yeah, yeah. have you with a hockey stick not not with a hockey stick no <laughs> i don't think i could do that <laughs> where did you skate at just at the um the oval yeah okay i skated there before i skated at um they, they used to have like um, I don't know if they have it anymore like the sportsplex they used to have like um public skates like public yeah, yeah. But like public skating yeah I went there before okay I, yeah. I don't think I did it like two times how were you I wasn't bad I don't think I'm a pro I was <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't bad though okay that's good. at least you tried at least you at least you got out there and tried yeah I gotta ask my boy McKinnon. Oh yeah, how was uh, how was I was in Cape Breton. I couldn't make it to the the after party. How was that? The photo of you sitting Nate. Someone has that framed somewhere. How <laughs> yeah, how sure. how was the after party? No, it was cool. Like I was always I always been cool with um Nate. Like that's my guy. Like he went to PA too. So yeah, yeah, because um, the Moosehead players go there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the Moosehead guys go there. So I mean, we always had a relationship. Like we always like checked in on each other. Um, in our careers, like. Just how you doing? Like when we when we when we come back here, we link up, meet up, you know, have 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 fun, go out, go out to eat, like just things like that. Yeah. So it's been cool. He invited me to his 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 um his private Stanley Cup party, so it was cool, and it was cool to uh see Sidney Crosby there too, because that was my first time meeting him, and um yeah, it was cool. It was, it was all good vibes. That's great. Yeah, it, was good. it must be nice just to you know you shake hands with Sid yeah, and Nate. Sure. It's yeah, just good sure. to. It's good to know those guys for sure. Yeah, nah, nah, they, they my guys. Did you get to drink out of the cup? Nah, I didn't drink. Nah, I don't know. I ain't yeah. do that. Nah, nah. <laughs> why, why didn't you drink out of the cup? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into that. I'm not, <laughs> Did you drink out of the cup? Did you drink out of the cup? No. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. You didn't have to drink out of yeah. the cup. I see a lot of people do it though. 
yeah, that's why you didn't do it. Cool. It yeah. was like COVID. Yeah, I don't want to do it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though. That, uh, no, it was a great summer for Nate too. He got to, yeah, he yeah, got yeah. to a definitely, definitely. Hopefully, when you go to Denver, they're at home. And yeah, you can come I, watch I, it. Yeah, definitely. I, I want to go check a game, one of his games too. Like, um, I want to go check one of his games for sure. Yeah, that's my guy. Is there? I'm thinking Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, there's not a NHL team. No, but no. they do have a um, AHL. AHL. Like, is that is that the step below? Exactly. So it's like yeah. the G League. Like the G League. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, they do have a team there, <clears throat> and it's some it's some Canadians I met oh, that yeah? live in the same building as me. No. <laughs> yeah, they live in the same building as me in Milwaukee. Oh yeah, small yes. world. So man. I met. So I met them, and um, like they gave me tickets to to the game and stuff. So. Have you, have you seen a hockey? You've gone to the games? Yeah, I went to I went to one of the games. What are they called? The, her, um, the mil- Do you know? I know there's a Milwaukee Admirals down up there. Right? I don't know what. It Admirals, might be the yeah. Admirals. I, I think it's the Admirals. Yeah. What's the what Admirals, field, What yeah. team is that for? Yeah, it's eight. AHL or ECHL, whatever. Yeah, but do you know like who's their it's, NHL um, team? Minnesota? Uh, no, not Minnesota. Uh, I was right, thinking. Look okay, no worries. Forget, all good. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's cool. Did is there a spare time in Milwaukee? When how much time are we at right now? Uh, is is there free time when you're yeah. there is free time? It's a lot of free time. When you're a pro athlete. Yeah, it's a lot of free time. How do you like, people don't people don't think it's a lot of free time, like but it's kinda it's it's a lot of free time. What do you do with your free time? I usually I mean I, I usually just chill. I, I like going to different restaurants and stuff, but I usually just chill. I wasn't I'm a, I'm a I'm a video game guy now. <laughs> Not that like I wasn't a video guy game guy before COVID. But when COVID hit like Bought a PS3. I had a um, yeah, PS4, PS5. Oh, they're at five now. Now I got Xbox. So yeah. What games are you playing? I I usually just play 2K. I was like when um, COVID first hit, I was playing like Fortnite and stuff, like Madden. But I'm usually just on 2K with my friends. Do you play yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I play myself. I play myself. Um, that's funny. You play yourself, yeah. Because live, you can play with people around the world, like your yeah, buddies yeah. around the world. Yeah, like I, that's that's what we do. We um go on there, you know, my friends. We we get a five together and go play against another five in the world. So it's cool. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> um, you're saying you're going out to restaurants. Yeah, they, they everyone says when you're a pro athlete, you have to be careful of what you put in your body and stuff like yeah. that. How how did you? Uh, I guess how old were you when you maneuvered the? Okay, I got to start watching what I put in my body type deal. Um, around high school, like high school. Like so I, your parents ain't like Oak Hill. Yeah, like yeah. Oak Hill. I say Oak Hill, not 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 Prince Andrew. Andrew. No. <laughs> Oak Hill for sure. Um, just because like when you get to a certain level, you you got to eat good because that's how you like that's how you perform well on the court. Like if you eating bad, if you eat McDonald's every day. You're gonna feel it on the court. I and love then, McDonald's though. For real? You don't like McDonald's? I never eat McDonald's. Are you serious? Yeah, I never eat it. You're like Nate. Yeah. You're just... Like like we can feel it though. You like can feel a, it. Like if I if I ate McDonald's right now and I went on the court, I can I can tell the difference from me eating McDonald's or me eating like a, a real home cooked meal. It just makes me slower. It makes it makes me sluggish. So what's on a game day? What time are you waking up? And what's your first meal on a game day? Game day, I'll probably be up at like eight thirty. Um, go to the gym, get breakfast. Wait, go to the gym? They have breakfast for you at the gym? Yeah, we have shoot around before games. At the stadium. Yeah, at okay. the at the at the our practice facility. Yeah, so that's like the equivalent of like a pregame skate. Is that what I'm thinking? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Keep going. So yeah. Um. Wake up, go there, get breakfast. We have a shoot around. Uh, after shoot around, we have another meal. What I know, but what is the, for breakfast? Like what? What? Oh, do you... I mean, whatever. Like whatever you want, really. Like whatever you, you ask them to make, they can, they can make for you. What are you asking them? Uh, me, I usually I usually just get um, like breakfast potatoes, um, eggs, a little bit of bacon. Like fruit, yeah, just stuff like that. Keep it light. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, after shoot around, we got a meal. Like, um, that's like a set meal that they make. Like, it's it varies every every day. Okay. So like, I mean, you can have salmon. You can have 
chicken. Like you have like a bunch of different stuff, like rice, potatoes, anything like that. So. What time is this usually at? Um, maybe one. Okay. I'll say one. Yeah, and uh, go take a nap before the game. Get to the game. We got meals at the game. And uh, <laughs> go play. Got meals after the game. After the game. <laughs> Are you ever hungry? No. <laughs> no. You're eating. <laughs> I'm eating You're good. You're eating good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, so they have set menus for you then. So you don't really have to worry about what you're putting in. They're not going to serve you bad no, food. No, they're not going to serve you bad food. So everything you're taking in, you know it's you know it's good food. Even on like the plane too. Like you just take a meal with you. Yeah, you could take a meal with you. Man. Or they got they got meals on the plane too. <laughs> All right, now you're now you're bragging. Now you're just you, you got meals on the plane. They they have food for you on the plane or at the rink at the yeah, stadium. At the stadium, yeah. Like you, like we uh, we'll usually have like a shoot around before like we take off on the plane, and then while we're in the gym, like right after our shoot around, we'll take a meal to go. Mm-hmm. And then like if you don't want that meal, like they got meals that you could they they cater on the planes. Wow. So. What's one thing when you got into the NBA, like, oh, I didn't know this existed. Like, whoa, I didn't know we could have that. I didn't know. What, what's that one eye, whoa? Um, I don't know. It was, it was, it was kind of everything I expected. Like, was it? It was just, it's just more. Okay. You know, it was everything I expected, but more. More than college. Yeah, like more, like more, like, no, just like more in general. Like, it was, it was everything I expected, but it's like. Over the top, like it's it's like a lot, like f- like food. I knew he was gonna have like food after the like before the game after, the, but I, but it's like the Not, most food. Like you'll never like you're always like you're never gonna be hungry. So like, it's like if you want an armband and they have a white one, but you're like, no, I want a green one. They'll give you a green one. Yeah. There's more more options. Yeah, like it's just like a, more options. What's the? I've always wondered that. What what is why do guys wear the armband? What's it for? Um, I don't know specifically with the armbands. Cause I don't, I don't really wear armband. I usually wear compression, like pants, like the, not, not pants, but compression. But I know um, like the Nike. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. usually wear those, but I mean, I, I wear them to keep my, my knees and stuff warm. Mm. So, oh, you I go mean, down to below the knee? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, I use, I use mine to keep myself warm. I don't know what the, I guess that's what the arms could be for, or maybe mm. for looks. I don't know. I don't oh know. yeah. The <laughs> looks thing too. It looks, it's a look thing too. So. Um. Yeah, and this is the big question. I feel a lot of guys have different answers, but shoes in the NBA. There's rumors out there that if you're in the NBA, you can have as many shoes as you want. What's the actual answer? Got to be careful though, because you have friends listening, and they might want your spare shoes. <laughs> so you got to be careful with this answer. I realize um, that. Like, how does that work? Yeah, basically, basically you can have any shoe you want. Oh wow! But but a lot of guys are like under contract with certain. Um, brands and stuff so they their brands just ship them whatever they want but you know guys like me who who don't have a contract with like a a nike or you know anything like that like the league is like a nike a nike league so yo like the jerseys are nike Nike, so you, you you can only get like nike shoes okay but i mean you can get what you want so i mean i'd be smiling ear to ear if i were you yeah it does it's cool it's cool for sure. That's great. I'm a, I'm a Kyrie guy. I like I like wearing Kyrie's. Yeah, Kyrie's. Uh, when he came out with his first shoe, I got a pair for uh, lacrosse. They had like the spikes or the the spikes at the bottom, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. up and down. Those were his mm-hmm. first ones. Those were great. Yeah, I like wearing Kyrie's. Man, I'm bad, man, it's it's a it's a it's a like I always said at the beginning, it's a it's a well marketed league. Mm-hmm. It's just very it's a cool sport. Yeah, I think Nate said that too. I think Nate's favorite sport to watch is basketball on TV. It's just yeah. it's it's great to watch. Cool. It's a lot of fun. Is it? Is it? Is it? When you're playing the game, you said at this point of the game, it's 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 just like breathing. It's just in your blood. It's not even like you don't think twice about it. But yeah. when you're in the game, do you realize how much of an influence that it has on people around the world? Because I don't it's think popular. Yeah, I mean, I don't think. I don't think like when you're playing, you you realize, but like when you go places, like when I come back home, yeah. you realize how like how the much in- of an impact it is. And like when you go other places, like when you were in, when you're in Milwaukee or when I'm in Milwaukee, go to a restaurant, like you you see like people actually like watch, they actually watch, like they pay attention. So yeah. Um, but you know I feel it the most when I when I come here because everybody watches me here. So I mean it's 
I like it. It's it's good. Like I, the kids get to see me on TV and stuff, and I love it. Your family must be proud of you. Yeah, for sure. They, they must. Always, they 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 always tell me so. Nah, they definitely are. That's awesome to be able to give back to and just say, yeah, look, you know, it, we're here. We, yeah. we made it. It's it must be a great feeling. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. That's why I work my whole life for. Absolutely. So. All right, man. Well. Do you want to give any little bit of advice to that? How old are you before high school? Tw- um, 12? 13? 13? Yeah, so let's 13. say that 13-year-old kid that you know has that maybe opportunity to go down to the States and play prep, yeah. but maybe they're on the, the edge of their confidence not being there to think they can go down to the States. Almost like you said where you were a little worried to go. Yeah. What's your advice for that like kid right there? Um, I would say just be you, like... In every situation, just be you. Like, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Like, no matter like no matter who it is, don't worry about what they think. If you wanna, if you wanna do it, then you go do it. Like, it's not like just have confidence in yourself doing it, and like never listen to the outside noise. That's that's kind of how I move. I don't really care what like outside people say, because regardless, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. So. Lindell, you're the man. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on here. I I, I really do appreciate it. I know, like I said, you're the busiest guy right now, east of Montreal. So (laughs) thank you very much uh, for coming in. Yes, sir. I'll uh, I'll I'll be a fan. I'm gonna watch you all year. Maybe I'll come down to Milwaukee. We'll see. Catch maybe maybe more Toronto is more realistic. But one of these games for sure, I gotta come watch you. Sure. All right, Lindell, thank it. you very much. Everyone listening as well, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. We're gonna put this out tomorrow, Monday. So let's do it. All right, have fun. Work hard. And we are out. Peace. Appreciate it.